Welcome everyone to the Degenerate Diaries. I'm your host, Ryan Shua. Uh, with me, I have uh, a local legend. Um, he's grinded the Mohegan scene, <laughs> the Foxwood scene, and now the Encore scene. You know, he'll, you'll see him late at night at Encore uh, trying to find the biggest games. Um, I have Mark Evanier with me, everyone. How's it going, Mark? Good, how are you? Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, man. So um, I, I know you play poker professionally. How long have you been doing that? Uh, I'd say full time, like a little over eight years. Cool, cool. I, I mean, you've uh, if you've stuck around for eight years, you know, I, I met you a couple years ago. Um, I've seen you play and move up in stakes and um, you've clearly been successful in your career. Um, so, I mean, that must be a great feeling. And you had a deep run in the World Series this year, too, actually. That, so that's pretty cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, I've been I've been fortunate to be able to do this for so long, and not many people can. And uh, it's always fun playing with you at, at Encore, and uh, yeah, down in Florida and wherever we uh, we cross paths. So, um, so yeah, I'm very fortunate. Definitely uh, been a you know a roller coaster ride, but uh, last uh, few years have been special. So, yeah, man, definitely, yeah. definitely. I I love seeing you come up. Uh, um, I love seeing you play. Um, I understand, you know. Um, we have a reason for, for doing this show. You know, sometimes we're not always um, quite as responsible with our money as we'd like. You know, I know, um, you know, <laughs> you, you are, um, you know, you're, uh, right now, like, I, I, not at the table or anything, but like, you're, you're a life knit. You know, you're very responsible with your money now. You, you, you've got, uh, you know, two feet on the ground. Um, but it wasn't always like that, right? Uh, it was not always like that, no. <laughs> so, um... I guess I'll start from when I was about like 22 and I was just starting to play more seriously. And uh, I was kind of known for it online, but I would do what I coined the term tilt jumping. So basically tilt jumping is like when you lose at a certain stake, a buy-in, you immediately jump up to the next stake and then you jump up to the stake after that, after you lose. So it's sort of like the equivalent of martingaling live cash. So, uh, okay. And you're, you're just, the the objective of this is just to kind of recoup your losses, right? So, you know, it's um, if you're playing like one, two, for example, and you lose $300, you can make $300 real fast playing two, five, or even faster playing five, 10, right? And exactly. Is that kind of so you're trying to get back whatever you lost like quickly and not have a losing day. So, of course, it works every time but once, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <totally> yeah. <laughs> so you did so, this all uh, What's that? You did this online. I did it online initially, and then it kind of transferred over to live cash for a little while. Um, I okay. started like Fox was at one two, and then I lose, and I go to two five. Then all of a sudden, I'm playing like five ten or ten twenty or whatever the biggest game was in the room at the time. Um, <laughs> so basically, I'll go back to I was like twenty two, and I had already done this once or twice before, and uh, I I found myself playing the. Uh, 510 I was like 22 and I had 3500 in front of me and like my right. total like net worth was like 6k so Hold on, let's go let's go back so you did you start the day playing 510 or were you at one two and you maybe lost a buy-in or two or yeah I started at one two lost you know I don't even remember this point lost again at two five and then I was like all right I'm just gonna try to get it all back at once at uh at 510 you know so you're probably so, stuck like like what, like 1K at this point? Or around, Probably, like if you, if you were to like guesstimate? Okay. Yeah. So now exactly. you're sitting at 510. So, How much do you sit at the 510 table with? Like, like, uh, uh, I'm, like, like I'm guessing like 3K or something like that. You know, I just bought in for like whatever the max was at the time. Okay, so you're stuck like 500 ish at this point. You got 3,500 in front of you. Yeah, something like that. Maybe okay. 3K in front of me, start with 3,500, but. Sitting there, and I think we we're playing four-handed, and um, I lost uh, like jacks to kings, like all in pre or something. The hand really didn't really matter, but uh, I was yeah. playing for a while, and it was just such a, um, you know, more. It was just such a, a shot, you know. I just remember being so disappointed and like not really knowing what to do. And I remember the rest of the table was willing to pay my time to get me to keep playing. So oh, that's like when boy. you know, like when when they're asking you to pay your time, you know you're the fish, right? So like that. That's I, <laughs> That, that's kind of like, oh, these people are being so nice. I mean, so like when you, when you play 510, just so I can explain to people, you, um, you pay time rates. So nothing gets taken out of the pot, but every half hour, um, I think Fox would charge, what, like $7 every half hour? 
for you to stay. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And and usually, um, you know, the the ebb and flow of the game for like a a time game is every half hour. You know, it, you can look at your watch and say, oh, it's time to go. You know, I don't want to pay the seven dollars for this half hour, right? But you had absolutely people, you had yeah. people so, offering to pay your time to keep you at the table. Exactly. So it's sort of like a um, the ultimate insult even though like they're trying to be nice to you it's like all right they just want you to stay so um i was pretty disheartened and i left and so i had like i don't know like 2500 or so to my name and i obviously lost like probably more than i ever lost so uh i had gone broke this way once before i never really would say i went broke like from poker i would basically like spend on life expenses and then i would you know do one of these martingaling uh tilt jumping things and like lose a bunch <laughs> of my role and then have to stop playing and I, I had a little job at the time too, but it was all commission based. So like I had no like direct income coming in. So I was like really in my infancy of my career. So I went upstairs and I uh, found that Sons of Anarchy slot machine. And I was like, all right, I'm going to oh just boy. put my last two K out of my last two K into the slot machine. And I'm going to see if I can spin it back up to like six K or more. And I was like, I'm not going to leave until I do, you know? All right. So you got two K in a freaking <laughs> slot machine. Wow. Yeah, cause, okay. Cause, uh, okay. Because because my opportunity to tilt jump couldn't really happen because I was already at the highest stake and I had lost like a full buy and I didn't want to buy in short and I was also like very too frustrated and I could tell I was going to be tilted to like keep playing so I found the slot and uh, obviously did something, like, did something draw later, you did, did something draw you to the slot machine did you like Sons of Anarchy yeah I had it? like one of those big numbers at the top like a six hundred thousand you know so I figured I changed my life you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always thought I was due. Like, I, I was due to win one of those slots. So, like, I'm due. It's my time. So, I'm going to win this and then play all the nosebleeds, you know? So, uh, anyway, went and played it. I'm sitting there. And, you know, I mean, it's it's funny now, obviously, but it's pretty depressing at the time. And I'm sitting oh, there, like, course. trying to win it back. And what's that? I said, of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, so, it's your last 2K. I mean, You're trying to do this for a living. Yeah. Right. At the time, I was like, it was sort of like, at the time, I want to say I was semi pro. Like, I had another um, job, but it was purely commission based it was like in financial planning and insurance so uh, i didn't have like anything coming in so i was like doing a little bit of both at the time and um anyway of course i lose and so i'm, I'm broke and well, what uh, were you, um I, I don't know much about slot machines but i know you can put like a certain denomination per spin like how much were you putting per, per spin there yeah i think i was betting the max which is probably like five bucks a spin or whatever but i mean it goes pretty quick when you're playing so for five, a couple hours five bucks like, 2k just like and then it's gone it was just dust yeah <laughs> a couple hours later it was gone man back back to start so Whew. man so yeah. what like so, what did you uh, learn that day like did you <laughs> well what ended up happening was i was kind of like got into depression for a couple of days of course and i started like kind of contemplating like why i was doing this and how come i couldn't just like be more disciplined and my poker and uh, my life in general. And, um, you know, I mean, you know, like when you're in the game for a bit and you have friends and I had good friends that, you know, were relatively successful and I know that I could have gotten some money to like start over. So I feel like having that safety net might have made me a little irresponsible with money, especially like playing online and making what I, you know, some money there and then playing live and making some money. And it was like, you know, I figured I always had a way to come back a little bit. And, um, but I was too embarrassed to tell my friends that I was broke and I lost all my money playing in a slot machine, you know? So like, I refused to tell anyone that I was like, I needed help. And, uh, you know, I grew up, my girlfriend at the time was the same thing. I didn't want to tell her we were living together. I didn't want to tell her that I had, uh, you know, blown all my money. So I actually ended up asking my parents, um, for a loan and, uh, they were like not supportive of poker at the beginning. Like I didn't tell them that I lost some of it playing slots, but I, uh, you know, they were not very supportive of poker. They wanted me to have like a stable career and like were very discouraging, which I mean, you can't really blame them. Like I would probably would be too, like, especially early on when they didn't really know how far this could take me um, to where yeah, I, I, I would say that's standard <sighs> of any parent. Uh, exactly. I mean, you know, and um, they basically made a deal with me. They're like, Hey, we will loan you the 5,000. Uh, that's what I want to start out with again, just like, you know, if, but they expect me to lose it all, of course, you know, and they're yeah. like, if you lose it, you have to get like a serious full-time career to pay, pay us back, like a job. Mm -hmm. That was like a job. Like at that point, I think I was more <laughs> afraid of 
having a job and going broke, you know, I was like, I'm not going to work no job. So, uh, you know, at the time I was just like a kid wanted to just do whatever I wanted. So I took it seriously, man. Like I, um, I found a good mentor who helped me out and, um, I played one, two for like a year and a half and everything that I have from that point on was off of that 5k that I, that I borrowed and paid back. But, uh, it was so a you, crazy ride, you know? So that day did the, like, you know, you have this realization, you know, you kind of suck up your pride and ask your parents for the loan. Did you stop the martingaling shit or like, uh, yeah, did that continue? Yeah. Or, I mean, that was it. I'm like, I'm done. I just have to just stay with the low stakes. And my mentor um, really explained to me how important bankroll management was. Cause I just never really got it. Like I would, like I said, I would be playing like 50 a dollar online or even 20 by 50 cent. And then all of a sudden I'm in like five ten with my entire role that I spent like the last two months, like building up and sure. I cashed them out along the way and made a few thousand, but like, I had, let's say like I made, I ran, I spun up like a couple hundred bucks to 5k. I cash out like 2k and then all of a sudden I'm martingaling the other 3k online, like in a state, like it took me like months and months to build, you know? So I just had no discipline and clearly like I got excited about a slot machine and just wanted to like earn it quick. You know, like I didn't want to like grind and like do it the way you're supposed to do it. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's basically what ended up happening. And like I said, I, I had done this a few times. I even had like my own coin term for it. Uh, clearly bad, but the thing is, is that I mentor a couple of kids in Florida now and they made a few mistakes like that. And I feel like no matter how much you tell someone to like what to do in these situations, they almost have to experience it for themselves. Cause like, you don't, yeah. you gotta feel that pain and that like frustration and like learn that you have to stay with the money that you play. Like my buddy, uh, he built his role too quick. He was playing big games and he, 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 like in like two, three days, he lost like 50 K like playing these huge games. And then all of a sudden he was humbled. He stopped playing like that. And he went down to like some small games. And I told him over and over again, this is what's going to happen that you're not ready to play these games and you're not properly rolled for it. But, uh, you know, like people don't listen until they like, no, no, whatever. Like, I, I didn't listen when I was 21. And I, you know, no. one thing I always tell, like I tell this to everyone, right. You know, when you're coming up, like, playing poker and you, you think you're good or whatever, like, I think the the best thing to never happen to me is, like, getting kind of, like, that 300, 500K score, like, in my 20s, right? Because sure. you get that score, yeah. you feel invincible. You're going to – you're just going to play whatever highest game you can play, and then you're going to go broke. I mean, um, you know, so the fact yeah, that I mean, you learned this lesson early with, like, 5K – you know, like that's, I think that's, that's, awesome. I, I think that's the way to go, honestly. You know? Yeah, man. I mean, a couple of guys I know had like 150, 200 K scores when they were young and they're broke now. So, I mean, it does, it does kind of hurt you. And then you also can just be super irresponsible because you don't really um, appreciate money. But I always laugh at like the real reason that I didn't go broke was nothing. It was just because I was afraid to get a job. Like, that's why I didn't, that's why I didn't go broke. Like I, if, if, if I didn't have the responsibility and the deal with my parents that I had to get a job, if I didn't like do something with this 5k, I probably would have like just played it too big and like just fucked around, you know? It's funny though. Cause like you kind of grew into uh, taking, you know, by, by, by giving the, you that ultimatum of like, you lose 5k, you have to get a job. You turned it, you turned poker into a job. Yeah. <laughs> right because you you stayed disciplined you played you know you weren't you weren't doing things based on your ego anymore you were playing one two for a year and a half straight and really kind of learning the game over uh, i guess you would say uh, maybe a little bit and uh you know learning no, the importance of bankroll management I mean, stuff, so. the right people. what's that you know i guess surrounded by the right people and as you know network is everything in this and like being oh, yeah. surrounded by the right type of players and the right type of uh, influences and I was fortunate to get that with a mentor and uh, some other friends that you know didn't steer me in the wrong direction and uh, yeah I mean I was always entrepreneurial like I uh, I had like a boat and I liked to fish and I would sell the fish that I caught I had like a little basically like an uber type business in Florida when I was down there in college before I started playing poker <laughs> it's like I just hate the idea of working for someone else like I just always did so for that reason like you know poker and some of the other things that I do on the side um, all that stuff like it's stuff that I can do on my own and I feel like I'm self-motivated enough to be successful on my own, you know? And uh, luckily, like everything that, you know, 
I mean, I'll play whatever game there is, you know. I mean, I've played as high as oh, 100, 200 and 50, 100 down in Florida. And, uh, you know, playing these big no-limit games is exciting, but I couldn't play in them if I didn't have good bankroll management starting from, like, that after that degen sesh all the way, like, these last eight-plus years, uh, changing my mentality and just, like, making sure that whether I won or lost, it didn't change my life. That was, was like, one thing that I always said was, like, you don't want to be playing in a game where if you win or lose, it's going to change your life for the positive or the negative, you know? I mean, tournaments, of course, is an exception, but as far as cash games go, like, you don't want to win or lose enough for it really matters, you know? So. I hear you. Yeah, I mean, we have rough days, we have good days, but yeah, you don't want that those kind of massive emotional swings that you know you were probably experiencing in your twenties, and I was experiencing in my twenties too. Sure, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like one day yeah, you feel I like mean, a god, the, the next day you're like, "What am I? Like, I'm doing everything wrong," you know? And that just doesn't. Yeah. For for you, absolutely. I'm sure that doesn't happen uh, as much. You know, it, you still like second guess yourself sometimes, but you know. It's uh, the, the importance of bankroll management is like, you know, is key for, for longevity in this game. And like guys like you that have learned that early on, you know, you're still around versus, you know, some of the people that, you know, we may have known in the past are just gone. And th they were more successful, you know, more, more successful in, yeah, uh, in the past and they're just like dust. I, yeah, I always said I don't respect anybody that's a professional until they're doing it for a few years just because, like, you know, then you go through the trials and tribulations and also, like, you can theoretically run good for a solid year, year and a half, or the game, uh, you know, adapts and passes you by and things like that happen and you don't make it. So I definitely uh, give credit to the people that have been there for a while. And like you and I both know, there, there aren't that many of them, especially in the higher stakes. So, uh, you know, definitely respect the people that, that do for sure. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I have seen people set these, like, uh, ridiculous goals of, like, you know, I'm a part-time player, 5'10", uh, you know, my goal this year is to make 10K a month. Like, how are you going to make 10K a month <laughs> playing 5'10"? You know, you could be the best player in the world. You're not going to make 10K a month, like, 20 hours playing five, uh, a month playing 5'10 part-time, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, certainly not in 20 hours. And I set lofty goals for myself. Uh, you know, I won't go into the actual number yeah, yeah. Uh, amounts. But, you know, being able to play big games and uh, consistent hours, uh, you know, I definitely have a pretty high ceiling for myself for sure. But I will say that uh, Martin Gilling and Martin Gilling Cash was a lot of fun. Like, I enjoyed that until you <laughs> lost because – I mean, part of it was I never wanted to go home with that feeling that I, like, didn't win money. And so that's, like, another thing you have to get used to is you got to be willing to have a day where, hey, you know, you lose 5K, whatever, 10K, and be like, hey, you know, it's okay to walk away. The game's not good. You're not playing your best. And, like, I just always felt like I never even wanted to go down losing a couple hundred. So I'd rather, like, lose my whole bankroll than, like, lose a couple hundred. So that's why I would just, like, jump, 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 and, like, eventually you'd win. But – until that one day when, of course, you uh, you dumped your whole roll, but, you know. Right. You want to go down in glory, right? You want to go down like Tony Montana. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I want. I wanted an epic story if I was going to lose. I didn't want to just lose a few hundred and be like, yeah, I lost. You know, it was just, that was the mentality. Yeah. I mean, these are the, the kinds of stories I'm getting. It's like, you know, from, uh, from years ago, you know, people learning lessons and, uh, you know, it, you know, people like yourself landing on their feet. So, I mean, that, that's, uh, that's kind of what this is about. So like that, that was a great story. Thank you very much. Um, is there anything you wanted to shout out? Like yeah. any social media or anything? No, you know, I'm not huge on that. I got like a uh, Instagram that I don't, um, I don't post that much. Uh, Snapchat, uh, Mark dash E definitely like add some poker people. I post on there and uh, it's more private. So uh, I add some people on that. But, uh, yeah, I kind of keep quiet as far as that stuff goes and uh, just kind of uh, plug along and make my money and, uh, you know, do what I can. But uh, what was I going to say? Um, but, no, these stories, I just feel like they're good because people, everyone kind of has a story like this and it kind of makes them feel better about their own situation to see different people that have done well, um, you know, lose their whole role and stuff like that at times and learn from it. And like I said, I don't think you really appreciate money 
and like this game until you have an experience or two because everyone that I know that I try to warn them about this they like were like sure sure and then they just get cocky and they play big and they lose a bunch of money and they're like okay you know I gotta go back to the lab and study and uh you know play right and play in the stakes where I'm comfortable with so yeah, yeah, it's kind of a slap in the face that you you have to experience for yourself, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, ex exactly. Yeah. So, All right, man. Well, thank you for being on the show. Um, I know you had some technical difficulties. I hope your laptop's okay. <laughs> yeah, it should be all right. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll, uh, I'll see it on corner in some ten twenty in a little while. Yeah, yeah. Probably not tonight, but tomorrow. <laughs> I'll all probably right. see you tomorrow. All right, man. Take care. All right. Peace. Take care. <laughs>